Okay guys, the other video is uploading. If you're listening to this, that means both of them are uploaded. So let's get into this guys. So verse 10, um, you guys can check out part 1 to understand where we are. We're on Isaiah 57 verse 10. You were wearied by all your ways, but you would not say it is hopeless. You found renewal of your strength, and so you did not faint. Whom have you so dreaded and feared that you have been false to me and have neither remembered me nor pondered this in your hearts? Is it not because I have been long been silent that you do not fear me? See, a lot of people feel like because God not doing anything right now that he doesn't see or hear, he doesn't know. Just because it seems like he's not acting right now or showing his power his vengeance right now don't mean that that day is not going to come because you see his heart towards the people in Isaiah 57 right listen what he said he said is it not because I have long been silent that you do not fear me I will expose your righteousness in your works and they will not benefit you when you cry out for help let your collection of idols save you the wind will carry all of them off a mere breath will blow them away but the man who makes me his refuge will inherit the land and possess my holy mountain. Now we're talking about comfort for the contrite. Excuse me. So, and it will be said, build up, build up, prepare the road. Remove the obstacles out of the way of my people. For this is what the high and lofty one says. He who lives forever, whose name is holy. I live in a high and holy place, but also with him. Turn this also with him. What did that say? Also with him who is contrite and lowly in spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite, right? Because Psalms 51 talks about that a broken spirit and a contrite heart, God will not despise, right? So I will not accuse forever, nor will I always be angry. For then the spirit of man will grow faint before me, the breath of man that I have created. I was enraged by his sinful greed. I punished him and hid my face in anger. Yet he kept on in his willful ways. I have seen his ways, but I will heal him. I will guide him. That's a word for somebody. Verse 18. I have seen his ways, but I will heal him. I will guide him and restore. I will guide him and restore comfort to him. Creating praise on the lips of the mourners in Israel. Peace, peace to those far and near, says the Lord, and I will heal them. But the wicked are like the tossing sea, which cannot rest, whose waves cast up mire and mud. There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. And if this just stood out to you, Isaiah 26, 3, Isaiah 54, which we just read, you can go back and listen to it, or you can just read it in your, um, your private time. And what was the other one? Psalms 35, okay? So now we're talking about true fasting in Isaiah 58. What are you guys getting out of the Bible study this morning? Um, this is our last day of our sale. What are you getting out of, you know, these videos? What did you get out of Isaiah? So 58, true fasting. Shout it aloud. Do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the house of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. Why have we fasted, they say, and have you not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and have you not noticed? There are so many different scripture references that I can say right now, but for the sake of time and because we have to go to 66, let's um, just continue to read. Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen, only a day for a man to humble himself? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying on the sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fast I have chosen, to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? 
Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor a wonder or want shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe him and to not turn away from your own flesh and blood. Then your light will break forth like the dawn. Catch this in verse 8, how powerful this is. Then, see, then it's contingent upon what we just read. Right? Then your light will break forth like the dawn. And your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness or your righteous one in the footnotes will go before you. And the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Somebody say that. And the glory of the Lord will be my rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, here am I. And I'm kind of reminded, is it Chronicles? If my people are called by my name, that scripture shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from the wicked ways, I'll forgive the sin and heal the land. Sorry, that's my hair. I'm just going through my um, my little locks, y'all. So if you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then <clears throat> there, there's another contingency, right? Then your light will rise in the darkness. See, before it's talking about shine, with that one but now with this one it's rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday <coughs> excuse me guys it's the AC2 I haven't turned it down yet so the Lord will guide you always he will satisfy your needs in the sun scorched land it will strengthen your frame you will be like a, somebody needs to receive these you'll be like a well watered garden like a spring whose waters never fail your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age-old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, and if you honor it by not going your own way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words, then you will find your joy in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father, Jacob. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. Let's get now into Isaiah 59. Sin, confession, and redemption. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden hidden his face from you so that he will not hear for your hands are stained with blood your fingers with guilt your lips have spoken lies and your tongue mutters wicked things no one calls for justice no one pleads his case with integrity they rely on empty arguments to speak lies they conceive trouble and give birth to evil they hatch the eggs of vipers and spin a spider's web spin a spider's web Whoever eats their eggs will die, and when one is broken, an adder is hatched. Their caught webs are useless for clothing. They cannot cover themselves with what they make. Their deeds are evil deeds, and acts of violence are in their hands. Their feet rush into sin. They are swift to shed innocent blood. One day, guys, God's been giving me this video to do for the last couple of weeks. I'm going to do it soon. We're going to do a video. I did this a couple years ago. Not on the YouTube channel. But I think he wants me to do this for the channel. Well, I know he wants me to do it for the channel. We're going to do a video talking about different spirits. Different spirits that people have. Some people have like demonic like spirits. And certain spirits like animal like spirits. We're going to get into that. Because I feel like that will bless a lot of people. Um, so God told me to do a video for that and we're going to do it soon. We're going to do it soon. So let me announce that so I can remember as well. You guys can look forward to that video, right? So their feet rush into sin. They are swift to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are evil thoughts. It'll pretty much be a video like with discernment, how to use discernment, how to really tap into you know, allow Holy Spirit to lead and guide you and show you things using wisdom. We'll be talking about a lot of different rich things on that video. So glory to God. So their thoughts are evil thoughts. Ruin and destruction mark their ways. The way of peace they do not know. There is no justice in their paths. They have turned them into crooked roads. No one who walks in them will know peace. So justice is far from us and righteousness does not reach us. 
We look for light, but all is darkness for brightness, but we walk in deep shadows. Like the blind, we grope along the wall, filling our way like men without eyes. At midday, we stumble as if it were twilight. Among the strong, we are like the dead. We all growl like bears. We moan mournfully like doves. We look for justice, but find none. For deliverance, but it is far away. For our offenses are many in your sight, and our sins testify against us. Our offenses are ever with us, and we acknowledge our iniquities. Rebellion and treachery against the Lord. Turning our backs on our God. Fomenting oppression and revolt. Uttering lies our hearts have conceived. So justice is driven back, and righteousness stands at a distance. Truth has stumbled in the streets. Honesty cannot enter. Truth is nowhere to be found, and whoever shuns evil becomes a prey. The Lord looked and was displeased that there was no justice. He saw that there was no one. He was appalled that there was no one to intervene. So his own arm worked salvation for him, and his own righteousness sustained him. He put on righteousness as his breastplate, and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance, and wrapped himself in zeal as in the cloak. I'm reminded of Psalms 18. Right, 18, verse 18. According to what they have done, so will he repay. Ralph to his enemies. Right, Galatians 6, 9 talks about this. Be not deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatever man sows, he reaps. Right, I'm not sure why the camera is looking crazy like this and jumping around. But let's keep reading, guys. In retribution to his foes, he will repay the islands their due. Excuse me. From the west, men will fear the name of the Lord. And from the rising of the sun, they will revere his glory. For he will come like a pent up flood that the breath of the Lord drives along. And then in the bottom says, or when the enemy comes in like a flood, comma, the spirit of the Lord will put him to flight. Okay, so the Redeemer will come to Zion, to those in Jacob who repent of their sins, declares the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord, my spirit who is on you and my words that I have put in your mouth will not depart from your mouth or from the mouths of your children or from the mouths of their descendants from this time on and forever says the Lord so be encouraged by that Isaiah 59 is sin confession and redemption especially the um, redemption part Isaiah 60 is talking about the glory of Zion arise shine this is another one of my favorites arise shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. Some translations say gross darkness, right? But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you, all assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried on the arm. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. So might have received this. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land. Young camels of Midian and Ephah. And all from Sheba will come. Bearing gold and incense. And proclaiming the praise of the Lord. All Keter's flocks will be gathered to you. The rams of Nebaioth. If I pronounced it wrong. I'm sorry. Will serve you. They will be accepted as offerings on my altar, and I will adorn my glorious temple. Who are these that fly along like clouds, like doves to their nests? Surely the islands look to me, and the lead, and the lead are the ships of Tarshish, or the trading ships, bringing your sons from afar with their silver and gold, to the honor of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Somebody say that, for God has endowed me with splendor. Release that over your, your own self, right? Foreigners will rebuild your walls, and their kings will serve you. Though in anger I struck you in favor, I will show you compassion. Their gates will always stand open. They will never be shut day or night, so that men may bring the wealth of the nations their kings led in triumphal processions. For the nation or kingdom that will not serve you will perish. It will be utterly ruined. The glory of Lebanon will come to you, the pine, the fear, and the cypress together to adorn the place of my sanctuary and I will glorify the place of my feet the sons of your oppressors will come bound before you all who despise you will bow down at your feet and will call you the city of the Lord Zion of the Holy One of Israel although you have been forsaken and hated with no one traveling through I will make you the everlasting pride in the joy of all generations you will drink the milk of nations and be nursed at royal breast 
then you will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior, your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Instead of bronze, I will bring you gold and silver in place of iron. Instead of wood, I will bring you bronze and iron in place of stones. I will make peace your governor and righteousness your ruler. No longer will violence be heard in your land, nor ruin or destruction within your borders. But you will call your wall salvation and your gates praise. The sun will no more be light, be your light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on you. For the Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Your sun will never set again, and your moon will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of sorrow will end. Then will all your people be righteous, and they will possess the land forever. They are the shoot I have planted, the work of my hands for the display of my splendor. The least of you will become a thousand, the smallest of mighty nation. I am the Lord. In this time, I will do this swiftly. Isaiah 61. I want to try to read as much as possible, guys, because I'm not coming back on. We have about five more chapters after this and we'll be done hopefully we can read it before the um 31 minute mark i think we can but if we don't you guys will continue but i think we should be able to get it in before the next couple of minutes so the year of the lord's favor the spirit of the sovereign lord is on me because the lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor he has sent me to bind up, remember Jesus read this right in the temple. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captive, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and prisoners in the bottom is um, the blind, right? To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Aliens will shepherd your flocks, foreigners will work your fields and vineyards, and you will be called priests of the Lord. You will be named ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations, and in their riches you will boast. Instead of their shame, my people will receive a double portion, right? Joel 2, 25, 26 talks about this restoration, right? And instead of disgrace, they will rejoice in their inheritance. And so they will inherit a double portion in their land, and everlasting joy will be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and iniquity. In my faithfulness, I will reward them and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the sprout come up, and the garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all the nations. One second, guys, what a break. Okay, 62. Zion's new name. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet. So her righteousness shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your righteousness in all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. No longer will they call you deserted or name your land desolate. But you will be called Hep Ziba, which means my delight is in her. In your land, Beulah. Beulah means married. For the Lord will take delight in you, and your land will be married. So I receive that. That's so beautiful. Right? As a young man marries a maiden, so will your sons marry you, a builder. Right? And sons builder here. As a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will your God rejoice over you. I have posted watchmen on your walls, O Jerusalem. They will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord, give yourselves no rest and give him no rest till he establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of the earth. Right? Because we know that God doesn't slumber nor sleep. Right? Spirits. 
Spirits don't go to sleep. They don't slumber. They don't sleep. They're constantly up. That's why it's always a lot of things going on in their spiritual realm. Right? Like we may sleep and get rest, but God rested on the seventh day, but spirits don't rest. Right? So so and give him no rest till he establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm, never again will I give your grain as food for your enemies. And never again will foreigners drink the new wine for which you have toiled. But those who harvest it will eat it and praise the Lord. And those who gather the grapes will drink it in the courts of my sanctuary. Pass through, pass through the gates. Prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway. Remove the stones. Raise a banner for the nations. The Lord has made proclamation to the ends of the earth. Say to the daughter of Zion, see your Savior comes. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. They will be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you will be called sought after the city no longer deserted. Isaiah 63 is talking about praise and power, prayer, I'm sorry, praise and prayer, and God's day of vengeance and redemption. Who is this coming from Edom, from Basra, with his garment stained crimson? Who is this robed in splendor, striding forward in the greatness of his strength? It is I speaking in righteousness mighty to save. Why are your garments red like those of one tread in the winepress? I have trodden the winepress alone from the nations no one was with me. I trampled them in my anger and trod them down in my wrath. Their blood splattered my garments and I stained all my clothing. For the day of vengeance was in my heart and the year of my redemption has come. I looked but there was no one to help. I was appalled that no one gave support. So my own arm worked salvation for me, and my own wrath sustained me. I trampled the nations in my anger. In my wrath, I made them drunk and poured their blood on the ground. I will tell of the kindness, kindnesses of the Lord, the deeds for which he is to be praised, according to all the Lord has done for us. Who is this part for this morning, right? Yes, the many good things he has done for the house of Israel, according to his compassion and many kindnesses. He said, Surely they are my people's sons who will not be false to me. And so he became their savior. And that's what God's looking for. He wants the real thing. We don't want nothing fake and phony. So why do people think God don't want the real thing? Of course he's going to want the real thing because he is the real thing. You heard what he said? He said, Sons who will not be false to me. And even Jesus told, you know, the Samaritan woman, God is looking for those that's going to worship him in spirit and truth. Right? For these are the ones that the Father, like, that he loves and that he accepts pretty much. So, and so he became their Savior. In all their distress, he too was distressed. And the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and mercy, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. Yet they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit, so he turned and became their enemy, and he himself fought against them. Then his people recalled, see in the footnotes what they're talking about, the days of old, the days of Moses and his people, where is he who brought them through the sea, but the shepherd of his flock? Where is he who set his Holy Spirit among them, who sent his glorious arm of power to be at Moses' right hand, who divided the waters before them to gain for himself everlasting renown? Who led them through the depths like a horse in open country. They did not stumble. Like cattle that go down to the plain, they were given rest by the Spirit of the Lord. This is how you guided your people to make for yourself a glorious name. Look down from heaven and see from your lofty throne, holy and glorious. Where are your zeal and your might? Your tenderness and compassion are withheld from us. But you are our father, though Abraham does not know us or Israel acknowledge us. You, O oh Lord, are our father, our redeemer from of old is your name. Remember, guys, when we did that video talking about the biblical numbers and the biblical names of God, I'm reminded of that. We're talking about verse 16, but you are our father, right? So let's keep going on. So 17, why, O oh Lord, do you make us wonder from your ways and harden our hearts so we do not revere you? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes that are your inheritance. 
For a little while your people possessed your holy place, but now our enemies have trampled down your sanctuary. We are yours from of old, but you have not ruled over them. They have not been called by your name. 64. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you. As when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains shriveled before you. Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come, excuse me, you come to the help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. One second, guys. Okay. But when we continue to sin against them, you are angry. How then can we be saved? All of us has become like one who is unclean and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up. I was about to laugh. It's not funny, but I'm reminded of Peter. I love Peter because Peter was so bold and Peter didn't play with them. One day Jesus was teaching them something and he was like, well then Lord, who can be saved? <laughs> like, well then Lord, who can be saved? Was it him or somebody that said, well then Lord, who can be saved? It was Peter or one of them. I don't want to say one of the boys. It was one of those disciples that asked well then who can be saved and Jesus was teaching them like deeper what he was saying right because we just read how then can we be saved okay so all of us have become like one who is unclean and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags we all shrivel up like a leaf and like the wind our sins sweep us away that's like on our best day it's still like a filthy rag in our own scrum apart from Jesus and apart from his finished work on the cross and what he stands for us just in our own scrum it's like it's a filthy rag before him right so thank God for Jesus right no one calls on your name or scribes to lay hold of you for you have hidden your face from us and made us waste away because of our sins yet O oh Lord you are our father we are the clay you are the potter we are all the work of your hand do not be angry beyond measure, O Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. O look upon us, we pray, for we are all your people. Your sacred cities have become a desert. Even Zion is a desert, Jerusalem a desolation. Our holy and glorious temple where our fathers praised you has been burnt with fire, and all that we treasure lies in ruins. After all this, O Lord, will you hold yourself back? Will you keep silent and punish us beyond measure? We're closing um, Judgment and Salvation for Isaiah 65. Nine. New Heavens and a New Earth. Isaiah 66 is Judgment and Hope. That's what we'll be talking about. If it cuts off, you guys just continue on. But let's get into this. Hopefully we can squeeze both in before the video cut off. So I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. To a nation that did not call on my name, I said, Here I am, here am I, here am I, here am I. All day long I have held out my hands to an obstinate people who walk in ways not good. We know what it means to be obstinate, right? Not good. Pursuing their own imaginations. A people who continually provoke me to my very face. Offering sacrifices in gardens and burning incense on altars of bricks. Right, we talked about the, the gardens, right? Who sit among the graves and spend their nights keeping secret vigil. Who eat the flesh of pigs and whose pots hold broth of unclean meat. Who say, keep away, don't come near me, for I am too sacred for you. Such people are smoke in my nostrils, a fire that keeps burning all day long. See, it stands written before me. I will not keep silent, but I will pay back in full. I will pay it back into their laps, both your sins and the sins of your father, says the Lord. Because they burned sacrifices on the mountains and defied me on the hills, I will measure into their laps the full payment for their former deeds. This is what the Lord says, as when juice is still found in the cluster of grapes and men say don't destroy it, there is yet some good in it. So will I do on behalf of my servants. I will not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah, those who will possess my mountains. My chosen people will inherit them, and there will my servants live. Sharon will become a pasture for flocks, 
and the valley of Achor a resting place for horrors for my people who seek me. But as for you who forsake the Lord and forget my holy mountain, who spread a table for fortune and fill bowls of mixed wine for destiny, I will destine you for the sword, and you will all bend down for the slaughter. For I called, but you did not answer. I spoke, but you did not listen. You did evil in my sight and chose what displeases me. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. My servants will eat, but you will go hungry. My servants will drink, but you will go thirsty. My servants will rejoice, but you will be put to shame. My servants will sing out of the joy of their hearts, but you will cry out from anguish of heart and well and brokenness of spirit. You will leave your name to my chosen ones as a curse. The Sovereign Lord will put you to death, but to his servants he will give another name. Whoever invokes a blessing in the land will do so by the God of truth. He who takes an oath in the land will swear by the God of truth, for the past troubles will be forgotten and hidden from my eyes. New heavens and a new earth. Behold, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and of crying will be heard in it no more. Never again will there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not live out his years, who he who dies at a hundred will be thought a mere youth. He who fails to reach a hundred will be considered a curse. They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and not eat their and eat their fruit. No longer will they build houses and others live in them, or plant and others eat. For as the days of a tree, so will the days of my people. So will be the days of my people. My chosen ones will long enjoy the works of their hands. They will not toil in vain or bear children doomed to misfortune. For they will be a people blessed by the Lord. They and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, 